Hi everyone, welcome back into another one, another week, another video, here we go again. First things first, Connor's news. So anyone who's seen anything on social media for the last couple of days will see that Connor's got a ride at a Moy this weekend on the FHO BMW. Don't know where that came from, does anybody? But uh, let's have a little chat about that and I've got a really good question that I think deserves a bit of a longer answer. Let's go straight into it. Like I said, first things first, Connor rides in the FHO BMW Armoy this weekend. And I, yeah, I don't know where that came from. I don't know if this is something he's had in the pipeline. To, you know, around TT, was he talking about it? Was it something that's come up? Is there anything going forward this is going to turn into? Like somebody, I put a little post up yesterday about it, and somebody said, "Oh well, if that's what's happening, that means either Hickey or Josh isn't going to be riding for Fayho next year." But I don't think that's the case. I don't know for sure, but I can only imagine that this run out this weekend is a bit of a. Uh, a bit of a one-off, bit of a taste, bit of a test maybe for him. See how he gets on with the team, the bike, and, and everything else that goes with riding for somebody new. But it doesn't mean Connor's going to get a ride for TT with them. But it also doesn't mean that Josh and Hickey, uh, one of them, won't be riding next year. You can have three bikes at TT in the same team. But if you look at, um, I'm sure MotoGP do it, and it definitely happens in F1. But when you sign a contract with the event. You are sort of, you are obligated to put a certain number of bikes on the grid. I say like that's part of your contract with the organisation is that you will make sure you put two cars or bikes on the grid at each race. That's your part of the deal. Obviously, it doesn't work the same in road racing, and hopefully it never does because we don't want to be going down that road. But I've seen. Do you remember when you had Joey, Hizzy, and McAllen? I think it was all riding the Castrol Hondas in the same year. And then in the HM plant areas, I'm sure there was like John, Keith Moore, and somebody else was riding them. Was it when Plate was riding? I'm not sure. I put she ran in 2007, 2008, that sort of time. But yeah, you can definitely, if FHO, and they've definitely got the funds to do it, if they say, right, we're putting three superbikes on the grid next year for the TT, and it's going to have Connor, Josh, and Hickey riding them, nobody at the TT is going to go, oh, no, no, you're only allowed two. Because <laughs> it's like, it's more the merrier, isn't it? And competitive bikes, good bikes with good riders on, on the grid, like that would be great. And I was speaking to a few people this year about um, teams and bikes and stuff. And if you remember, obviously if you look at, if you look at Milwaukee now, um, so um, David Todd's team, Milwaukee BMW, uh, the only run the Milwaukee banner for like the, the road stuff, that team is the Cheshire Mulder's team at BSB. And Davey rides the bike, so it's in blue livery for Superstock. And then you Rory Skinner Avenue and I think that second rider, I'm not sure, in BSB who ride the Cheshire Molden bike there. Yeah, there's still there's still Taz, so it was Taz and Tyco, and it was then Synetic, and before that was Relentless, but they're all they're just the title sponsors of the Taz team. So they always used to have two riders, didn't they? You, know, you used to have Cam and Bruce were on the bike, and then you had like Guy rode it with Cam or Bruce, I can't think with Bruce. William Dunlop was part of the team. Connor was part of that team. You know they've they've, they've had um, numbers of riders with them, but they they always had a two man team like across all classes. And obviously because they're BMW now, they don't run six hundreds. They're basically bringing a stock and a superbike and one rider. And wouldn't it be nice if there was two Milwaukee BMWs in the stocker and the superbike class, and Connor could ride one of those. So. Yeah, it'd be nice to see them have a two-man team, and if FHO want to have a three-man team, then great. I just hope it doesn't mean it's the end of Padgett's, because like so much history with Clive, and not just Clive, but the whole Padgett's outfit, if that comes to an end, uh, and I'm not saying it will, there's no indication it will, but that'd be such a shame. Like, they're just, they're just they're part of TT history, and uh, yeah, we need to have Padgett's there, really. But, but yeah, great to see Connor on a competitive bike, and hopefully he has a good meeting there. And hopefully it leads on to something else and Connor can get himself a nice competitive ride for next year. Connor's like, I always root for Connor because he's, he's one of the most, him and Guy Martin, it comes up all the time, most successful TT riders without a win. 
and there's loads of bad luck involved in that for both of them. But obviously, Guy's moved on to other things now, and he'll say he doesn't care about the TT at all. Although when he was racing the TT, it was the most important thing in the world to him, and now he just apparently doesn't care about it anymore. And don't get me wrong, I love Guy Martin, and I love everything he does. Everything he does on telly, I watch it, I find him a really interesting character. He was great for the TT. And he, yeah, he was massively unlucky not to win one. Things happen, don't they? And when they constantly happen and seem to go against you, it just feels like the world's against you. And how different would Connor's career have been as a TT racer if... Let's go back. Let's go back to 2010. So you'll remember that film, TT 3D film. He was riding that Kawasaki, the Makazu bike, first race. And he had over a 20 second lead in the first superbike race. Connor's young, he's fit, he's riding over 130 miles an hour. And this is 14 years ago. Uh, like he was right at the front. He's like, he, like in that race... He had blitzed them, he'd done them, he won the race. And then, do you remember he had that pit stop and he couldn't get it to, he was struggling to get like a clutch engagement to get it going again, eventually he got it going and it slipped, slipped, slipped. And he broke down at Laurel Bank and that was the end of it. And he must have been like, ugh, that's terribly unfortunate. However, I'm young, I've got loads of time and I'm riding well, I'm beating them all, next race I'll do the same again. So, and, but it never happened. Then he had his massive crash and he had to come back from it and then things move on and then different bikes, different teams. And he's never got his win. And could you imagine as well, how many times have we sat there and watched Connor finish second or third in a big bike race at the TT? Uh, I don't know how many times it is, but it's numerous times. And then, obviously, David Todd was a bit of, not an anomaly, but he's like gone to another level this year. And you sit there and you watch that senior race, and Connor wasn't in it. Connor's withdrawn his entry at this point. And the two guys who are winning all the races, along with Dino, is Dunlop and Hickey. Dunlop breaks down on, on the first lap or second lap, Hickman crashes out. And if Connor had been in that race, there's a good chance he would have been picking up the pieces and gone and won it. And like you can't say that for sure, like you can't with any of this stuff. And Dave, he was obviously like running at a real hot pace. But he just must feel like every time there's an opportunity for him to go and win, he's either not in it or he's injured or he's in a he's in, on a bike that's not competitive. So unlucky. And yeah, I'm waffling again, but I just want to see Connor win a TT. And if he's going to win a TT, he needs to be on a really competitive package. And I'm not saying that the pageant spikes aren't, because last year and the year before, I think they really were. But there's definitely something not quite right there this year. And as far as I know, Carla basically rode that bike as hard as it could in the superbike race to, I think, was a seventh. And it's like, that's the most I can get out of it. And that's not going to be good enough to win here this year. And... Connor wouldn't say, and it, it wouldn't be right to say, that he's wasting his time riding around in the 7th. It's not a waste of time, but he's coming here to win races. That's his ultimate goal, is to win a TT. And if he's on a bike that he rides the wheels off and he knows it'll only be good enough for 7th, you know, what's the point for him? It's like, I, under, I completely understand where he's coming from. So yeah, I'm, I'll finish this one here. I just want to see Connor on a competitive bike. And he's happy and he's riding well and I just I just want to see him win because this place will go absolutely nuts if he wins a TT. Um, not just from the locals who want to see him, but everybody else who's watching it and recognising a local winner. So, you know, it's, it doesn't happen very often, does it? Obviously the Crow Boys did it this year and that's great. Obviously the last solo winner was Milky and that was a long time ago. And, you know, it's a bit like watching um, Charles Leclerc win the Monaco Grand Prix this year. Even people who aren't from Monaco were just happy to see him as a Monegasque win the Monaco Grand Prix, that connection, and for Connor to win TT here, especially after everything he's been through for the last 15 years. Yeah, I just really want to see that happen, and I just hope it does. I just would hate to see it all fizzle out and then Connor retire without a win. But anyway, fingers crossed, all goes to plan, and he gets, uh, gets a nice competitive package for the next couple of years. That was only supposed to be a two minute piece of uh, conversation, and then, but I've gone and waffled on again. Anyway, question. So, this is a good one from Paul. Uh, a question about what's the rider's etiquette when they come across a TM on track uh, as you're going to an incident? Can they overtake you or do they hold back until they are through the scene? Now, this is really interesting because um, when we get a call for an incident, we're all on the same radio station, as I've spoken about before. And let's just throw out a scenario now. So we're all at station all around the course, and as I explained, we're at different places all around the course, and we're all stationary, we're all there, and we'll go, um, control two, mic two. So that's the gym. Let's just say he's at Douglas Road Corner, crash at Blaff Bridge. So, 
Jim makes his way to Bluff Bridge and starts dealing with this incident. And what will tend to happen is, depending on the incident, depending on a lot of different factors, but they'll say to the travel marshal at Balacrane, right, make your way through to Douglas Road Corner. And I'll say to the one at the grandstand to make your way through to Bala Crane. And I'll say to the one at Brandywell to make your way to the grandstand and so on. So we all basically fill up the previous position. And what it does, it means when Jim's finished dealing with his incident at Balaf, he can zip to Sulby and everything's covered again. So when an incident happens, that TM will initially go to that incident and, and start dealing with it. And it might be a minute, it might be five minutes later. Basically, once they've taken in all the information they need to be able to work out where everyone's going to be and what areas you need covering and what's coming next and things like that. Because sometimes if it's the last lap of a race, they won't move us all around um, because we're all about to finish the session. Different, different factors all the time. But there's a good chance we'll all be moving. And so when a rider comes across a travel marshal on course on a live track you've only got a one in eight chance that they're going to an incident really the rest of us are just moving positions and so the etiquette isn't to wait behind us and, and wait till we get through an incident because there's a good chance we're not even going to one we're just moving and so the simple answer to it is they just pass us like they pass a back marker and the whole idea again that we've talked about before is that we're a decent speed we're on a predictable line and they'll come across us, and as soon as they get their first opportunity to make a safe pass, they just pass us. They've just got to treat us like another person on that course who's racing. They don't need to know there's an incident anywhere. The first point you'll know there's an incident is you'll see wave flags. And so that's all the information you need. It's nothing that we're telling them. There's nothing on the back of our bike saying we're going to an incident. There's nothing to say where it is. Just pass us like anybody else. And if you come across an incident, there'll be waved yellows. You'll be sometimes directed to a certain side of the road if need be to get you away from any potential um, items in the road or people in the road or marshals or rector cell anything that could be there and as you come out of it eventually you'll get a green flag and you'll be on your way again so yeah the answer to that one i think it's quite a good one to talk about is that they just pass us like they pass anybody else just treat us like any other racer on the track just go past us and if you come to an incident you'll be flagged appropriately on your approach to it and then you'll be flagged away as you get through it and that's pretty much that one put to bed. Before I go on this one, um, obviously I think quite a lot of people are more TT, uh, not biased, but there's, 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 more, there's more interest in the TT than the Manx Grand Prix. There's always going to be. There's more interest in Premier League football than there is Championship. It's just, it's, it's a higher level, a bigger profile, it's a bigger event. It's, it's always going to be that way. However, the interest that we have in the Manx Grand Prix, and I've spoken about this before, is I, I obviously I find it really, really interesting to see these newcomers and see the way they're coming because they're the next crop. It's like scouting kids for football, isn't it? You're seeing the next superstar and being able to spot that sort of stuff early and see it happen and follow their progress is really interesting. Anyway, Jim's been done a series of videos. So Jim Mike too, Jim Hunter, as I've spoken about many times, and most of you all know who he is anyway. Uh, Jim's been doing a series of videos leading into the Grand Prix about potential winners or podium contenders uh, in some of the classes. Um, so it's on Facebook. I think he posted it on Twitter as well. But I'll just post up a little bit here about, about where it is and where you can find it. So if you've got some interest in the Grand Prix and you want to know a bit more about the riders and the people who are going to be competing for the wins and the podiums, then go over, um, get following Jim and keep up to date with the videos they're making about the riders coming up the event because we're only is it four weeks now is it three weeks might be three weeks tomorrow it just creeps up creeps up fast and um i'm starting to get excited again about it now it's like it's, it's coming just i just feel like we're owed a decent week of weather after tt and after last year's grand prix as well where it was a bit bit crap too so i'm just fingers crossed we get some nice weather for grand prix um, just looking forward to it again. Just forward to getting back out on the bike and just getting involved again, feeling the whole buzz of it, and yeah, just uh, looking forward to that. So, like I said about the last one, Jim's away at the moment, but I'm hoping me and Jim can do a Q and A. We've got some good questions coming up, and get that for the next one. But that's pretty much it. Just wanted to wrap up about Connor. Like, I'm not going to go over it again, but yeah. I just really hope everything goes well for Connor this week and then we can move on from there and he just gets a nice ride for next year. And, uh, and obviously that question about us moving around the course and riders passing us. 
So hopefully that was a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.